Hello and welcome to another video from Paraplayers. And today we're going to be looking at this little beauty, which is actually an Elcan. Now, if you didn't know, the Elcan is a Canadian optics and electronics company that's owned by the American defense contractor Raytheon. They're actually involved in creating cruise missiles. So these guys know their stuff when it comes to the military aspect. Elcan manufactures devices that are geared towards civilian and military markets. Elcan manufactures the Spectre line of combat optics, and they come in a variety of different configurations. We have the Spectre DR 1.5 times, six times, the DR 1 times, four times, four times optical sight and TR 139 are also available, with a 5.56 or a 7.62 millimeter ballistically matched reticule. Now this site is actually used by the US and the UK military for its M249s and its M240s. So let's get this out onto the table and have a look what we actually get in the box and I shall give you my views and thoughts so we have a, a little look around this beautiful looking Elcan. So here we are, to give it its official designated title as you're probably going to find this, it's the Wii Europe Phantom 4x32 Elcan Spectre and Dr. Sai and this one's actually in black. And the price of this is $179.99 or you may be able to find this cheaper out on the web but I actually got this from Patrol Base and their prices are pretty much bang on the cheapest you're going to get out there so that's the box it comes in let's open this bad boy up and see what we actually get inside so here we are I've emptied all the contents that's actually out of that box and I'll go through individually each part now this first one here is the actual lens cleaner you're going to be able to clean the doctor site and the actual sight optics with that one not with the second one this is a dial for dialing in the doctor site or although really for airsoft this is pretty much redundant it basically gives you the ability to calculate the center point for the for the for the distance that you're shooting at the site actually comes with two batteries that's one for the doctor site red dot and one for the main site as well you get this nice little screwdriver which is nice that you don't actually have to go looking for tools in order to be able to adjust all these stuff such as windage and elevation and things like that this one is for actually cleaning the scope not for the actual lens there is a difference on the fibrous filament on that what we got up next next we have the allen key which is for setting the actual doctor site onto the main l can and also this here which enables you to attach this to your picatinny rail which when you actually open the box the doctor site is actually already pre-attached to this so you need to take that off if you want to put it on top of the LCAM. over here we have the instruction manuals which you, there's not a lot to be to be had really to be honest with you a lot of the stuff on here is just telling you about the red dot on the doctor site changing the brightness um, there is a brightness dial on the actual l cam but not on the doctor site and I'll explain that as we get a little bit further in. Now one of the batteries was flat so don't think that this doesn't actually work. The other battery when I put it in worked perfectly. So here we go, we get this nice little pouch for carrying your l cam around with you. And there is, I think, I don't know if this, I haven't actually undone this before, let's just undo this. I think there's a uh, ability to put this on your belt or your backpack why you would want to do that i've got no idea but anyway you do have the ability possibly add it onto your molly system and we've got a little zip up here but fortunately i'm going to show you in a minute the case is not the best well it's quite nice to, to take it on and off and there is a quick release on the site you can see this zip here broken already i've only used it twice so the actual zips on this absolute garbage but the actual case and everything else all the little accessories is a nice little thing to have so let's get the the bad boy out and let's have a look at the actual l cam so here she is in all her beautiful glory and what a really attractive looking sight this is very different to the, your standard scopes and sights that you get for assault weapons well in fact lmgs and saws and all sorts very different looking thing and it really is an attractive looking sight although first impressions i am going to tell you this thing is heavy this is not the lightest of scopes at all in fact everything on this actual sight unit is made out of metal barring the actual turning dials for the red dot as you can see really quite a nice looking thing and they do do this in a sandy colored tan version as well let's just have a little look around here now this is a fixed four times magnified sight there are different variations in fact the real version of this sight enables you to flick between 4 and 32 I think it is uh, but unfortunately this version doesn't actually have that so down at the bottom we lift these clamps up this is your quick release clamps that should go straight onto your Picatinny rail 
and I've had a little bit of a problem with these. It's extremely tight when you try and fit that, but I'll go through that as we get further into the video and I'll actually get this onto the Picatinny rail and I'll show you just some of the problems that I've actually been having. On the other side, we have lots of things for us to look at. This first dial here, on the original Elcan version, you would pull this down flick that across and that would actually change a prism within the actual site to change it from 4 to 32. Now this one, this actually does nothing although the actual real mechanism is on this site and the click and everything else, it just doesn't do anything. Now this dial at the front is to lift elevation, it actually lifts the whole scope up rather than actually changing the sight unit within the uh, scope, which is something a little bit different l can that have gone for from different ones. And on the side here with the screwdriver, on the original Elcan, there is a little clip that you push up and down to actually lock this in. So that when you actually get recoil on the site, it doesn't affect any of the site. It's absolutely locked in rock solid. Now if I turn it over onto this side, we can actually change the site unit here as well with this screwdriver. It is actually missing a few of the markings on the side here. There should be some print on here on the original one, so it's a pity that New Prol or we couldn't actually include those on there. And here we have the battery cap. Nice little lanyard here, a little metal lanyard to hold that on. I've seen, I have seen some of the cheaper ones. It's actually a piece of string, but this is exactly how it is on the original, so it's nice to actually have that. On the side here, we have 0 to 11, which actually turns on the brightness of the red dot and also the drop sight within the actual optic itself. And I'll show you a little bit of a close up of that right now. Not the easiest to get on camera, so I do apologize. As you can see, there are a few markings that are actually missing here from the original LCAN. And as you turn up the actual dial, it's probably not going to be visible too much on there. You can turn it down for using night vision, etc., etc. But unfortunately, the original sites should have green dot and red dot, and this one only has the red. So again, another feature that's not quite accurate to the original. If we actually look at the top of the site here, there are these small iron sights, which can actually use as a backup sight, should you lose the front and the back, and they can be adjusted and moved to any position on here. Now for airsoft, by the time you've got your goggles on and your face masks and everything else, these are gonna be pretty redundant. And for me, I'm actually going to be putting this on a drum roll, please, an M249 saw. So I won't actually be bothering with these little sights, but I'm going to keep them on for the authenticity. As you can see here, we have an elevation and windage options for the Dr. Red Dot sight, which again, for Airsoft, is really going to be of no use for the ranges that we're actually shooting at. And it has got a really nice red dot in there, no blurring, crystal clear, nice and sharp. And the, the way you turn this sight on and off, is it's got a light sensor on it so to turn it off you literally just put the dust cover back on and that will turn the battery off and supposedly it's got a battery life of 55,000 hours so once that battery's in you're never ever going to have to change it again as I mentioned this is not the lightest of sight units that you're going to put on there but if you're wanting something that's authentic and that feels well Presumably, from looking at the data, it is the same weight as the original. It really is a beautiful, nice looking sight. So let's get this on the weapon and I'll show what it looks like and some of the problems I've been having. So here we go, I've mounted this on my Amoeba M4 in the DMR style. And as you can see, these, once it's actually on the Picatinny rail, these side clamps, I cannot shut them. If I push that any for, further, it's either going to damage the rail or damage the sight unit. It is absolutely rock solid. And at the minute, I can't find a way of any adjustment from that. So I may have to take this back to patrol base and say, Oi, what's going on here? Is there something I've not done or something I need to adjust slightly underneath with spanners and tools to make it fit? Um, but that's the only problem. I can't actually lock it in any tighter than that. And obviously you don't want to be running around with it that because it's not locked into place completely solidly. If you were to bang those levers forward now, the sight unit would actually come off. So might need a little bit of jiggery pokery down there, something that needs adjusting or an alteration, but I will look into that and find out what the actual issue is. Now with this site, like many of other sites that I've actually tried, the actual site picture is beautifully crystal clear. It really is a stunning looking site, but you do have to get the adjustment just right. Any slight off movement from your eye that's not perfectly in line, and you do get a lot of what's called almost like a tunnel vision of blacking. It looks like the site gets really small inside and it really is about positioning yourself in the correct place for this site. And once you've actually got it, 
crystal clear, perfect clarity. It really is a beautiful looking sight. It's just that a little adjustment I'm gonna have to try in a rush when you need to bring the sight up, whether you're gonna be able to mess around a little bit with it or just get it bang on. It's probably a little bit of practice or even both. But anyway, if you've, if you've enjoyed this video, do let me know. It is a heavy thing, but the clarity is stunning and it looks beautiful. So although it hasn't got the four times 32, it hasn't got the green dot and things like that. Do we really need it for airsoft? That is the question. It's expensive, 180 pounds out on the interwebs. But for that, you're getting the iron sight, you're getting the doctor sight, you're getting beautiful clarity with a big, large picture. And at the end of the day, it looks damn bloody Gucci. And if it's good enough for the UK military, saw gunners and the LMGs, it's bloody good enough for me. Thanks for watching. I've been paraplaced.